So anytime I'm doing any studio work, I'm always very careful to try and capture a great performance and a great tone, whether I'm recording vocals, electric guitar, drums, acoustic guitar, you name it. The best way is to always get it done right the first time instead of the whole kind of fix it in the mix approach. While that's our goal, it isn't always realistic that everything is going to work out just as we want it. Maybe we get the magic take of a guitar performance, but the actual recorded tone has a lot of noise uh, incorporated into the sound that we just can't get rid of. Maybe we have a great acoustic guitar take, but there's a lot of string squeaks. And there's a million other examples like this where we have a great take, but there's something imperfect about the actual recorded sounds. Well, that's what it's so nice to have a company like Isotope around. Uh, I've been using Isotope plugins for a while now. I have no affiliation with them. I just love their product. I have a whole bunch of their plugins and I use them regularly when I'm doing studio work and in my own studio productions for my projects and writing my own music as well. So two plugins that they have, which are part of their RX-8 standard suite of plugins, are the Spectral Denoise and the Guitar Denoise plugins. And I just wanted to let you all know about it because I think that these are two plugins that every studio guitar player should have. You may not use them on every recording, but they can be a real lifesaver to have when we need them to salvage a track. So let's do this. Let's go over and take a look at some examples of what these plugins can actually do. So here I am over in Cubase and I have two tracks recorded. I have just a little sample of a heavy electric guitar sound. Um, I made it extra heavy so I would get a lot of noise in there and something that might really bother some folks and not be a great thing to have in a studio recording. And they also have an acoustic guitar track that I purposely recorded in a way that isn't going to be too pleasant. So let's take a look first at the electric guitar track. Let's take a listen first um, just at the beginning of this track. And I'm going to select a little bit of the noise here at the beginning and just loop this. Let's take a listen to what this sounds like. So I'm sure you can hear a lot of noise. And I'd ask you to please listen on a good set of speakers or a good set of headphones so you can hear the little details we're gonna be talking about in this video. So there's lots of noise on this. Now, this may not even be the worst example out there, but on a proper studio recording, I mean, I guess I could just come in and trim the beginning of this and get rid of that. But the fact of the matter is that noise is still going to exist within the recorded guitar part, which sounds like this. <laughs> Now where that noise may become a problem in certain recordings is if we EQ some more high end into that or some upper mids, or maybe we compress a sound and it brings some of that noise floor up. So the less of that noise we can have when working in a mix and stacking tracks, the better it's going to be. So we have this very heavy sound, probably heavier than anything I would normally use, but I did it for this example. Uh, we have this noise component that comes along with it. Well, is there a way to get rid of this? Well, we're going to use two plugins by Isotope, and I've already kind of put them on here. We're going to have first and foremost, the Guitar Denoise plugin, and we're also going to have the Spectral Denoise plugin. And I'm gonna deal with the Spectral Denoise plugin first. The Spectral Denoise plugin is going to get rid of broadband noise that could be really bothersome in a tone or a mix. So let's do this again. Let's listen to this noise. I'm just going to loop this again. Now, the reason I'm looping is what we can simply do is come over to this learn control on the Spectral Denoise. As, as, and as we loop this noise, I'm gonna hit the learn button and the Spectral Denoise plugin is going to learn what that noise is and be able to remove it more accurately. You'll always have to have a piece of the noise sort of isolated. So that's a good thing to keep in mind if you're recording in the studio and you do notice, you'll usually have some pre or post roll that will have those noises that you need to kind of let the plugin learn what it has to do. Uh, but you know, if you do notice some noise and you know you're gonna use this later, maybe give yourself a little bit extra pre-roll of that noise so you can get it to work. But even with this where I have maybe only a second or less of it, it still works nicely. So I'm gonna unbypass the plugin, I'm gonna hit the learn button and I'm gonna let this audio loop. And that should be enough. Now, let's listen to the outcome now when we have this plugin engaged. I'll flip back and forth from bypass to unbypassed.
very impressive what it's done already in getting rid of that noise. Now you might say, well, how does that affect the tone of the guitar though? Well, let's take a listen to that and come right here and get a little loop of our actual guitar tone and I'll bypass and unbypass the plugin. So here it is on bypass. So as you can hear, it really doesn't affect the guitar tone greatly or at all. You may not even be able to perceive that. You do hear a click when I go from bypass to unbypassed, but uh, the guitar tone really doesn't change at all, but it cleans it up. And now if we were to go EQ that, maybe add some more upper mids or highs to it, compress it, if we may not want to compress that sound, but if we did, then it's not going to bring all that noise up. We've gotten rid of that noise first, which is going to be a very important aspect. Now, the problem is, is you, if we go back to the beginning here, that hasn't really gotten rid of all of the parts of the noise there. I'm going to keep the uh, spectral denoise on. I still have the guitar denoise plugin bypass. The guitar denoise plugin has three separate sections to it. It has an amp section, a squeak section, and a pick section. So the amp section is going to work on kind of static, non-broadband noise. And it's going to be able to reach up into some very high harmonics uh, to get rid of sort of static noises that can be problematic when recording an amp. So if you listen very close to this, you'll hear a very high-end kind of pitch that could get a little annoying and sit on top of this track. Let's listen to that. You may have to turn it up kind of loud to hear it. So even though we've gotten rid of that broadband noise, we still have some of that little high-end noise up top. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to hit unbypass this. We're going to hit learn on our guitar denoise plugin and we'll let this run for a second. Okay, again, if we go unlearn that now and we'll listen back. Watch when I put this on bypass. You hear we've gotten rid of further noise and that little high pitch up top. So now with both the spectral denoise and the electric guitar denoise on, listen if I bypass both of those. We've basically got rid of the bulk of that noise and I'm turned up fairly loud here to hear it. Now what happens to the guitar tone though? Does that affect the guitar tone in any negative way? Well, let's listen to that. We'll go back and forth with that bypass versus unbypassed yet again. And again, when these are grayed out, they're bypassed. When they're blue, they are functioning. So as you can hear, almost no difference in the guitar tone, but we get rid of all of that spectral noise and that amp noise and buzz, which could be problematic in a number of cases. Like I said, if we're gonna EQ this or compress it in any way, stack more of these tracks on top of one another in the mix. You know, some folks might argue and say, well, I don't really hear that noise in there anyways. But you know, later on in a mix situation, when we start processing that sound, it can become problematic with numerous tracks and whatnot. And then at the end in the mix, we're kind of going, ah, I wish we didn't have all of these little, you know, noises that we could have got rid of. So these two plugins for me are invaluable when I'm doing studio work, whether I'm doing a session or working on some of my own music for albums. And on my last album, actually, I used that Spectral Denoise plugin one time when I had some uh, P90 pickups I was recording with a, with a pretty awful buzz. I loved the tone, but I couldn't get rid of that. I used Spectral Denoise. It was gone and the tone stayed intact. So hats off to Isotope for making these two plugins. And this is part of, like I said, the RX standard suite. Now, you might say, well, what other purpose could we use the guitar denoise plugin for? Well, let's go over to our acoustic guitar track now.
So here I have an acoustic guitar track, which I purposely recorded in a fairly poor manner. It was kind of hard. It took me a few takes to get it squeaky enough because I'm so used to not having those major squeaks go in. But let's listen to this little track here. You can hear on the chord transition, there's a lot of this squeaking that I put in there. So let's take a look then at the Guitar Denoise plugin on the acoustic guitar and the squeak section. In this case, we don't have to learn the function at all. We have a sensitivity control, which is going to allow us to control the amount of detected squeaks that get attenuated. And then we have a reduction control, which is going to uh, be the depth of the squeak attenuation, so how much we're going to pull those back. So obviously we want to set these as low as possible so that we don't run the, the risk of changing our guitar tone or, or changing it as little as possible. We also have a short and a long duration, which is going to be for different uh, lengths of squeaks. So this, the long setting detects squeaks up to a thousand milliseconds and the short detect squeaks up to uh, 200 milliseconds long. So I'm gonna keep it on short. And the other little neat thing here is we have a little ear uh, button up here we can click, which will output only the squeaks that it's, it's noticing. So I'm gonna let this run with just the, and I, again, I'll set a loop here, uh, with just the ear button um, enabled so that we can hear just the squeaks. Kind of neat, so now we know we're not really affecting too much of the other audio here, but we are pinpointing on those squeaks. So now if I go back and I, I take that off, I can then roll my reduction into a point where it reduces those as much as I need. So let's listen, this is with no reduction. So we can hear we can really attenuate those squeaks by playing with these controls and getting them to a point where they're almost not even noticeable anymore, whereas the guitar tone stays fairly intact. Again, in a mix, any of the little artifacts you might hear there very likely will get buried in a mix. Um, and if you were playing just a solo acoustic, which wasn't going to be buried in a mix, maybe you're gonna to wanna to be a little more careful with your adjustments to attenuate those just as much as you need to. But a really nice transparent way to salvage a recorded track. Now, like I said in the beginning, the number one thing we would always want to do is try to not have these. If I did perform that acoustic guitar track in that manner, I would likely just say, Give me another shot at it. I'm gonna go re-record it again. Uh, that's always going to be your best bet. And obviously I could play that much, much better than that. And like I said, it actually took me a little bit of time to get it as bad as I, I needed to, 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 to kind of show these uh, features off. Um, but again, maybe we have a track that just has a little bit of it that we want to attenuate. You know, it, it really is just a great tool to have for when we have these situations. Maybe we're engineering a production where the guitar player in the rig isn't even there anymore. We notice something after the fact, we can throw this in and salvage the project in a way that is going to be extremely transparent and maybe not even noticeable at all to the, to the end listener or even the musicians involved in the project. So they're great tools to have. So I just wanted to show you those couple tools. Uh, this has been a real lifesaver for me a few times and I love that I have this as part of my uh, audio workstation that I can grab whenever I need it. And the RX-8 standard bundle of plugins includes many more plugins beyond just the Spectro uh, uh, Denoise and the Guitar Denoise that can come in very handy. So go take a look uh, over at the Isotope website on their RX-8 standard. They also have an RX-8 Advanced, which adds even more functionality, obvious for a little more money, but really depending on your needs, 
these things can be a real lifesaver. So anyways, I just wanted to let you guys know about it because this has been something that's helped me so much. And if I can uh, open somebody else's eyes to this and save them a lot of hassle and work by, by maybe grabbing one of these or just having the knowledge it's out there, then that's, uh, that's a great thing. And uh, I'm happy to be able to, uh, to, to put that out there. Maybe some of you have already used this. Let me know in the comments how you like using it and if you've been successful with them. So anyways, thanks so much guys. Please like the video, share it with anybody who you think would get use out of it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already and hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. I'll be back really soon with some more content. Thanks for tuning in. Ciao for now.